Okay, so applying VSEPR theory to Lewis structures that we've already drawn. Now, any uh, molecule or ion, any molecular ion that's only made of two atoms is pretty simple. It's always going to end up being what we call a linear shape because whenever you just have two lines or two points, the only shape that you can really draw between them is a straight line. So they tend to not ask you what the shape is for a linear, uh, a two atom molecule because it's so simple. So it's linear. You can't even really um, discuss electron domain geometry or bond angles. So that would uh, be like HCl and O2. Those are just simple or N2. Those examples would all qualify as just these little two atom binary molecules. So we just call them linear. But the rest of these, we can apply the VSCPR theory to identify electron domain geometry, molecular geometry, and bond angles. So if we look at methane, I can do a quick count that there's one, two, three, four uh, electron domains around uh, the carbon, which is going to give us a tetrahedral electron domain geometry. I can see that all of those domains are bonded to atoms, which means the molecular geometry is also called tetrahedral, and the bond angle for tetrahedral shapes is 109.5. So that would be the angle like here, if we called it theta or something like that, it'd be the angle between the H, the carbon, and the H. So they call it this uh, H to C to H bond angle. Okay, moving on. Uh, next, if I look around the S, there's one domain, two domains, three domains, four domains. So again, four electron domains gives me, always gives me a tetrahedral electron domain geometry. However, two of them are lone pairs, so the atoms are only in this shape, and that shape is called bent or V-shaped. Tetrahedral would have an angle of 109.5. However, lone pairs, non-bonding pairs, repel more than bonding pairs. And so as a general rule, it's not 100% accurate, but it gets you the right answer on the IV, you're going to shrink the bond angle here, here's the bond angle we're looking at, by about three degrees per lone pair. So if we start at 109.5 and then we shrink three and then another three, we're going to shrink about six. I would normally round off to uh, the nearest whole number at this point instead of 103.5 and I'll call it 103. That will definitely get me the mark for having the right bond angle. Over here I've got one, two, three, four domains, lots of four domain shapes, tetrahedral electron domain geometry. Only one of them is a lone pair that leaves the remaining three to form this sort of trigonal pyramid shape. So trigonal pyramidal, and the bonds are only going to be repelled by one lone pair. So that's minus three. That gets us down to about a 106 bond angle, 106, 107. Okay, uh, around the carbon, one, two, three, four, all bonded to atoms. So this is tetrahedral, tetrahedral, 109.5, just like the original methane one we did up at the top. Okay, where am I? And we're just kind of repeating ourselves on these examples. Uh, this one is ends up being trigonal, pyramidal, about a 106 bond angle. This one is another bent example with around a 103, 104 bond angle. Forgive me for going quickly. Okay, this one's different. Around carbon, there's this single bond, and then there's this other domain here, which is a triple bond, but that only counts as one domain. So there's two domains, and that shape is linear. They're both bonded to atoms, so the molecular geometry is linear, and the bond angle is 180. Okay, a little bit different here. Also, we've got one, two, three domains. The double bond is just one domain here. So three domains gives us a trigonal planar electron domain geometry. All those domains have atoms on the other side, so also trigonal planar molecular geometry. That gives us a 120 bond angle. Okay, now they can also ask you the shapes for things that have more than one central atom, but we only ever apply this to one atom at a time. So if I was going to talk about shapes here, I'd just be looking at one nitrogen atom at a time. It turns out this molecule is totally symmetric, so 
the shape of this pink N is the same as the shape around that other N. Also, if they ask you for shape, shape is another way of asking you for molecular geometry. Okay, so there's one, two, three domains around that nitrogen. Um, one of them is a lone pair, however, and that means that what is left, although it doesn't look like it the way it's been drawn, if you think of three, three domains always takes a trigonal planar sort of shape. But if one of them is uh, a lone pair, then we ignore it when we name the molecular geometry. And so the actual shape name or molecular geometry name here is bents. Now the bond angle for three domains is 120. So if we shrink it about three degrees and we say 117, then that will get us into the correct, um, the correct range. So going through all three possible answers, the electron domain geometry around the N is trigonal planar, the molecular geometry is bent, and the bond angle is 117. Okay, around this one, uh, this around the carbon is tetrahedral for all answers and 109.5 because of its four domains. Around the O, which also has four domains, but two of them are lone pairs, the angle uh, between the carbon, the oxygen, and the hydrogen would have to shrink by about six degrees. So the angle over here would be about 103. And remember, 103 is just an estimate. The IB could present you with an example and they could say 100, 95, they could say 105, anything. So long as it's smaller than 109, 109.5 would be acceptable. And this shape is bent over here. Okay, last example. Once again, around the carbon, we're looking at tetrahedral, tetrahedral, 109.5. And then around the nitrogen, there's also four domains. One of them is a lone pair. So that's trigonal pyramidal and about a 106, 107 bond angle from shrinking the extra repulsion from that non-bonding pair.